Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome back to my series on Shakespeare. As always, there is a link in the description box to the rest of the Shakespeare series and on that playlist you can see videos on Macbeth, on Romeo and Juliet, on Much to About Nothing, on Othello. I've also got some more general videos on how to read Shakespeare. In this video we're going to be looking at The Tempest, so I'm going to give a brief overview of the plot and the characters and then we're going to talk about some of the more prevailing themes within the play. The Tempest is the story of Prospero who has been marooned on a magical island with his young daughter Miranda. He used to be the Duke of Milan but was usurped by his brother Antonio and sent out to sea in a leaky boat with just a few provisions and some books and happily has managed to find himself marooned on an island. Once on the island we learn that Prospero has managed to enlist the help of slash enslave two of the island's original inhabitants. So we have Caliban who is the son of the witch Sycorax who used to live on the island and he's half human, half beast, half fish. He's described in lots of different ways, we don't really know what he is. And Ariel who is a spirit who had been imprisoned in a tree by the witch Sycorax and Prospero on landing on the island released him from the tree and then because Ariel was so thankful, it then agreed to serve Prospero. The play opens with a great tempest which has been conjured by Prospero with the help of Ariel with the aim of sinking a ship which is just off the coast of the island and marooning all of the passengers. We learn that these passengers are actually the people that Prospero used to know in Italy and were instrumental in his downfall. So we have his brother Antonio and the king of Naples Alonso, the king's brother Sebastian, the king's son Ferdinand and Gonzalo who is a kindly lord who we know helped Prospero and Miranda escape with um, Prospero's magical books, which is very important. The survivors are scattered across the island and this really sets the scene for Prospero just to enact his revenge on the people that usurped him. So he has most of the survivors in one camp and then the king's son Ferdinand he maroons on another side of the island so that the king thinks that he's dead. Prospero then orchestrates a meeting between his daughter Miranda and Ferdinand and since Miranda has not seen another man apart from her father she instantly falls in love with Ferdinand. Prospero makes him go through a series of tests in order to prove his character. On the other side of the island, Caliban runs into a drunken butler and jester, Stefano and Trinculo, who have been washed up from the shipwreck as well. And after they give him some wine, he decides to worship Stefano as a god and enlist his help to try and overthrow Prospero and murder him. Prospero uses his magic and his spirits to um, torment the, uh, the King of Naples and his brother Antonio, make them see all of the awful things that they have done and they also um, go through pain and hurt as well because Alonso for example thinks that Ferdinand has drowned. He then reveals himself to everybody at the end, brings all of the other characters together and crucially forgives Alonso and Antonio for usurping him all of those years ago and then very happily everyone gets back on a ship um, back to Italy to celebrate the marriage of Miranda and Ferdinand but not before Prospero releases Ariel from his service and decides to throw his book and his staff into the sea and he gives up magic. There are a few obvious and clear motifs within The Tempest, but Shakespeare being Shakespeare, there are quite a lot of layers and some other things that we can unpick. So some of the key themes are um, the difference between revenge and forgiveness and then also the relationship between freedom and service or, or, or being trapped or controlled and then going further down that line we also get into discussions of post-colonialism as well. On the surface this play is all about Prospero. He has created an arena where he can fulfil his wildest dreams of finally giving the people that wronged him their comeuppance and putting everything in their faces that they did wrong to him and being reinstated as Duke of Milan. Um, but really, it's a little bit more complicated than it first appears because two people have had something taken away from them. Prospero has had his dukedom taken away from him and he's been banished to this island. But also Caliban, who was the original inhabitor of the island, has had his agency and his land taken away from him by Prospero. So Prospero is in the role of the victim, but also the role of invader. At the beginning of the play, they're both harbouring resentments and both want to exact revenge on the person that wronged them. However, they end up going about it in quite a different way. Eventually, Prospero reaches forgiveness of the people that wronged him, although he doesn't get there very obviously and very quickly. In fact, near the end of the play, Ariel does say to Prospero, if you were to behold these men now, after I've been tormenting them, you would feel sorry for them because if I were human, I would feel sorry for them. And it's almost as though Ariel is taking Prospero down this journey and leading him towards 
empathy and forgiveness. Caliban, on the other hand, never gets to the point where he could forgive Prospero. He's all about revenge and all about murdering him right from the get-go. Um, it's interesting to compare the characters of Prospero and Caliban because Caliban is depicted in the play or can be depicted in the play as subhuman in many ways or look at somebody who isn't intelligent enough to carry that kind of emotional intelligence and empathy. Um, at the beginning of the play, we do find out that although Prospero and Caliban were friendly when they first arrived, Caliban then tried to rape Miranda and that is the reason for this soured relationship, quite understandably, um, on Prospero's part and that's why he banished him from his house. However, that does then seem to be the excuse for absolute like enslavement of Caliban, essentially. He's not a very willing servant and Prospero and Miranda are very unkind to him and call him names. And we can take this idea of servitude and look at it in the wider context of what freedom is and what it means to be free. Obviously, the island, as a metaphor, is a trap for everybody. Everyone is trapped there for some reason against their will. But everybody else on the island is actually trapped within Prospero's art, Prospero's magic. He even uses it on Miranda at certain points. We know that Ariel was trapped in a tree when Prospero arrived and then as a thanks to Prospero, decided to go into his service. So he kind of switched one kind of prison for another. Caliban, very similarly, when he wants to exact revenge on Prospero, he doesn't think about killing Prospero and then becoming the king of the island himself. He latches on to Stefano, worships him for giving him wine, and thinks, you could kill Prospero for me and then I will worship you. So he again is replacing one master with another. You could look at the rest of the Naples party being trapped by their deeds. They certainly are trapped by Ariel and they're made to move. They're actually kind of frozen in time and made to confront front the things that they did in the past and actually even the last line of the play Prospero says set me free what he does is ask the audience to clap which in turn will set him free from the play that he's within so there's some really interesting themes there and another way that we can examine the freedom of these characters is through a post-colonial lens so you can cast Prospero as the invader and Caliban and Ariel as the native people to that island now Caliban and Ariel react to Prospero in a very different way Ariel is very much the good native, the good slave. He's grateful for Prospero for everything that he has done and he seemingly willingly is helping Prospero in his aims now, although it is with the promise that once Prospero has got his revenge, he will then provide Ariel's freedom. Because Ariel isn't a human character, there's lots of scope for how he's interpreted in plays. Sometimes he is portrayed as very ambiguous and almost not really having any feelings towards Prospero at all. In other versions, when Prospero has released Ariel from his service. Ariel has then spat in Prospero's face. So there's lots of different ways that this can be portrayed on stage. Ariel can also be seen as a metaphor for the people of an invaded nation who want to work with the invaders. So somebody who is happy to serve them, wants to work with them to try and change the system from within, um, very grateful to the invaders for what they have done. Caliban, on the other hand, is the bad servant or bad slave. Caliban is a very difficult or interesting, is another way of saying it, character, because the, you can interpret him in a very patronizing way. You can look at him as someone who is subhuman and someone who doesn't really understand Prospero's intelligence and his magic. But at the same time, he is portrayed at being very one with nature and understanding his island. He's also very angry that Prospero has invaded. He doesn't willingly help Prospero in any kind of way. And his answer to his situation is to murder Prospero to overthrow him. So he's shown as being very violent and kind of conniving. However, I think traditionally, this view of Caliban is almost Prospero's view of Caliban. It is doesn't necessarily mean that that is who that character is and just because he is lashing out at Prospero doesn't mean that he is an inherently unintelligent and violent person it could just be that that's how he is reacting to Prospero there is a lot of scope then for how much pathos a director might give to Caliban or indeed Ariel, and how much agency you want to give them as their own characters. So I really hope that that was interesting. I would love to keep discussing your interpretations of The Tempest in the comments section below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!